Ayan! Hello, hello everyone! Kamusta kayo dyan, mga kameta, mga kaheydarians? Ayan, balikan natin itong pangako natin which is to discuss itong launching of Mayors for Good Governance Movement uh, just the other day, no? Uh, kapon ba yan? Sorry, I lost track of time. Grabe <laughs> natin mga pinag the, the other day, no? Uh, so this week, nakita natin na finally na-launch na ito. A movement, a nationwide movement for good governance. Uh, and what makes this, of course, very interesting is, so far, this looks like an LGU, local government unit movement. Kung mapansin nyo, around two or three years ago during the pandemic time, especially after yung first interview natin with Mayor Magalo, you can find it on my Spotify, on my podcast and YouTube channels. Uh, naka at least dalawang interview tayo, including a more recent one. But following the first interview we had with Mayor Magalong, I looked at the possibility of a broader coalition of LGU leaders working together, you know, yung LGU stars, star mayors from across the country, no? Uh, from different background, from different expertise, from different colors for that matter, working together. So this is something I've been discussing for quite some time. In fact, if I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that's something about Magalong and Vico Soto. Uh, I wrote a piece on that. And lo and behold, um, ayan, November 8th, 2022. So, ito yung article po natin. I'll just show it here. You can check it there. So, this is something that I was theoretically conceptualizing it. Uh, just to be clear, no direct, uh, you know, coordination with any mayor or anything like that. This was just something that I was thinking about uh, on my own terms. Just to be clear, in, in the case of Vico Soto, I never even got to meet the guy in person or even have a conversation with him. Uh, although there was no lack of effort on our part. Not complaining, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> now, going back to this. So, this issue of governance beyond partisanship. You know, Magalong, Vico, LGU leaders, LGU stars from all across the country coming together. This is something that I have been discussing for quite some time. And now, finally, we're saying that this thing is coming together. And what's interesting here is the effort is not being led by your usual suspects. Meaning, you know, mayors, star mayors from Metro Manila, or some would say Imperial Manila, but it's actually coming from LGU leaders from outside Metro Manila. Obviously, Joy Belmonte, the mayor of Quezon City, one of the new star mayors, at least more star nowadays, uh, someone who's former palatable, it seems to, including progressive groups, etc., etc., and someone who did pretty well in elections, who's, who's getting more attention, including very positive coverage in Bloomberg, among others, for progressive ordinances and policies, including on gender inclusion in, uh, and other kind of inclusive initiatives. Now, Joy Belmonte was supposed to be one of the co-conveners. This event actually took, uh, took place in the University of the Philippines, which is Deliman in Quezon City. But from what I understand, Joy Belmonte actually was abroad, so she just delivered her message. I think nagbeam in na lang yung message niya. So she was not there physically. So once you step in, one thing that you immediately notice is that there are a lot of Metro Manila people in the audience, but the one on stage, the ones pushing uh, for this new movement, the ones at the very forefront ng itong movement na to, are usually hindi taga Manila. You know, people from Mindanao, people from north of the Philippines, you know, so from solid north to solid south, and not necessarily pro Digong or pro, pro Marcos. You have all of these LG leaders coming out. So. That's one thing I noticed, and and remember, just a few years ago, like if you say star mayors, who comes to your mind? Vico Soto, Isco Moreno, yeah, and now increasing love for Joy Belmonte, but none of them were there, which, which is, uh, yeah, it, it can be interpreted in two different ways. No, on one hand, as I said, it's a good thing that we're saying LGU leaders, not only at the grassroots levels, but also from outside Metro Manila are more involved. At the same time, it makes you wonder. Um, why the Metro Manila-based, more popular mayors uh, are not taking the lead. In the case of Vico Sota, at least in the case of Joel, Joy Belmonte, at least she was there, uh, well, virtually, and she's listed as one of the co-conveners, and she seems to be on board with this. The, the, the launching pad of this event was in Quezon City, so more or less within her jurisdiction. But there was no sign of people like Vic, uh, Vico Sota, for instance. And... I really don't know what's going on with the guy. I think the guy is so focused on his, you know, getting things right inside his city 
getting some of the big projects, including your whole renovation and rehabilitation projects, uh, mayor's office done. I think he's so focused on consolidating his good governance initiatives there. And now I think more recently he pushed for, uh, you know, a number of projects, including social housing. housing. That's, I think, fantastic. But as much as I, I appreciate that, I still find it puzzling well, why but, um, there's no conscious effort in the part of uh, Vico Soto's team. I, I don't know about the mayor himself. I've not talked to him, but this is what I can judge from people around him, no, who are in charge of coordinating things. But in my sense, is very insular, Sila. And I think that's even a positive way of looking at it. Uh, I heard from one of the attendees during the event the other week, that I asked him, why Vico Soto was in my head? was something like, Baka hindi siya believe sa akin. No? And one of the terms I keep on hearing is, medyo snob siya. Again, I don't know. I haven't talked to the person uh, directly, so I really don't know his state of mind, so I'm not going to prejudge him. You know my stance very much is very clear in terms of the, the value and the merits and the progressive ideals undergirding his, uh, his, his works. I just don't understand why dapat ganyan ka-insular uh, yung Vico Soto. I'm sure they have their own reasons. But just to be brutally honest about it, it's not coming off nicely to people outside. You know, not only in the media, but also my sense is from other LGU leaders. Parang feeling nila, so what Vico thinks is beyond all of us, or he just doesn't want to reach out to us. Which brings me to this second issue, because obviously you can say that, yeah, I mean, um, okay, great for Mayor Magalang for taking the lead, since obviously. The, the 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 you know Imperial Manila mayors are are too focused with their own thing or probably as one said behind this labilisa movement na ito. so I'm glad that people like Mayor Magaling are stepping up to the plate now obviously I heard a number of criticisms and actually these criticisms were already preempted dun sa interview na, na, natin with uh, Mayor Magaling which you can find on Spotify and or YouTube etc which is good governance what do you mean by good governance and more importantly and the process of selection no more mayors na sinama dito so more than 100 mayors from across the country were included dito or at least nag sign a manifesto so if you look at the manifesto the manifesto is commendable at the same time it's more generic it's generic enough i think to make sure that there's at least uh, an agreement on basic principles and values and when you're starting a very small movement, I think it makes sense that you start not vague, but a little bit more generic, so that you can you can bring in more people, that it, it feels more inclusive. And this brings us to the second part of what we're discussing. I heard from some quarters that wait lang, bakit itong mayor nanjan? Oh, bakit ito yung convener? Or bakit ito yung kasama ni? So usually I hear very good things about Mayor Magalong himself. I mean, already you're hearing about him as a potential presidential bond 2028. That's always what you hear when someone is making some waves. Um, let's see what's gonna happen then. Of course, Mayor Magalong for now should focus on what he's doing in Baguio, get things done, do big projects and initiatives in Baguio, get things done so that my exhibit Asia, whatever he decides next and whatever he decides next will also depend on how well he performs as a mayor in the next term or two. Uh, so that we see what's going to happen from going 2020. Is it, is it national office? Is it executive? Is it legislative? Is it the highest office? Uh, so in a, in a sense, it's too early for that. But my sense is, while Mayor Magalang himself so far, you know, with the exception of some trapos and all, uh, is broadly respected and his his integrity is appreciated, yung kanyang proactiveness is appreciated, at least what he stands for, what he symbol symbolizes is appreciated. I heard some people, you know, making, you know, some comments, snidey comments, including on Twitter and more recently after events, like, oh, bakit si ganyan nandun? Oh, bakit si ganyan nandun, diba? And, and I asked Mayor Magalang about this and his, his answer was, Essentially, ayon natin ng cancel culture. Hindi tayo nandito para mag-filter out at mag-brand. Ay, ikaw hindi ka pwede kasi sobrang trapo ka. Ikaw siguro medyo pwede. So, wala silang... Eh, parang bricks yan eh. Katulad na sinabi natin. Like, the reason bricks didn't have very strict criteria for the inclusion of new countries is because, you know, they're still building up momentum. So, when you're building up momentum, and in a way, you're a minority movement. Because let's be honest, it's not like many traditional politicians or many of the political elite in the Philippines are invested in good governance. If anything, some would say it's the opposite. That, you know, good governance, meaning less and corruptions, meaning all of the basic things that we see in countries with rule of law. If tuloy mo yan, mahirap manalo sa Pilipinas. Siguro yun yung usual unspoken thinking among many politicos, no? 
So obviously this is a minority movement. So while it's young, while it's fresh, while it's fragile in many sense, and while it's not even getting open, wholehearted support from uh, prominent mayors from Manila, see Vico Soto not even you know missing in action again. Um, I think the idea here is that you know you keep it chill. Uh, you're not here in cancel culture mode. Let's bring in more and more people. And some mayors who have maybe signed this or joined this and, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle and so, so maybe you want to nudge them in the right direction. So it's a difficult balancing up because hindi ka pwede into, into the filtration mechanism and cancel culture kung nagsisimula ka pa lang. And considering in the case of Mayor Magalong, yes, he has held national positions uh, inside the government as, you know, the, as, as one of the... Uh, contact tracing czars during the pandemic as the number two in the Philippine National Police back in the day, head of investigations at the PNP, etc. Well, the thing is that he's still primarily an LG leader and an LG leader from outside Metro Manila. So I think he it doesn't make sense for him to aggressively come out there and say, oh, ako yung in there. And let's not forget, the key message that Magalang is trying to send here is non-colored, no? Meaning, in the eto Dilawan, in the eto Pula, in the Eto Pro Marcos, Pro Duterte, he's consciously trying to go over that. Now, yeah, I'm just trying to be, again, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Because if you look at it, this is not the first time. Like, nung nag-attend ako, nakikinig ako sa mga speeches nila, uh, first online kasi umahabol ako from traffic, and then in person, and a lot of people are looking at, yun ang tinitignan ko sa crowd, parang, eto yung mga parang nakikita ko dati, nung early 2000s, when you had the rise of people like, uh, Grace Padaka, di ba? Uh, so remember, before tumakbo si Pinoy, nung 2010, and remember, Pinoy, President Pinoy, was the first Filipino president who made anti-corruption front and center. Now, pwede natin debatehin kung uh, gano'n ka successful yung Pinoy administration in terms of fighting, uh, fighting uh, corruption. But I remember back in the day, this we had something like this. And interestingly, the star mayor, star LG, LG leader back then was also from the north of the country. No? And the case of Grace Padaka was extremely inspiring because she was, you know, uh, she was a political outsider, uh, you know, in a way, she 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 was the ultimate underdog in every sense of the word, and yet she she, she was able to make it uh, to a top position in a very tough place in the country, which has been dominated by a single dynasty for a very long time. So she really worked uh, against the, the grain uh, and against all odds. But we know that what happened, because with the uh, uh, Aquino administrations and liberal parties' efforts, is that. It was eventually sabotaged by a number of things. First, maraming own goals. I think the management of Masapano, I think the explanation of the difficulties of reconstruction and preparation for for Yolanda. Uh, there are a lot of things you can think about. You, you look at the language and rhetoric of some of the top officials and inefficacy in dealing with infrastructure issues, breakdowns in MRT. All of those things, unfortunately, kind of... Uh, besmirch no or diminished yung value na good governance or dan matuwid na pinupush ni Aquino administration and then second you had this conscious effort by Duterte and his minions to really demonize the liberal party and blame them for everything which is one of the dumbest thing i've heard because uh, to be honest it is true that uh maraming pagkakulang ang Aquino administration uh and i have also criticized them but to blame them for everything that has gone wrong in the philippines over the past 30 40 decades that's a little bit of a stretch because by every by uh sorry just to be honest i shouldn't have said dumbest i should have said one of the most questionable or suspect arguments out there um <laughs> no i mean or political exaggeration sorry about that i didn't mean um because <laughs> naman kung titignan mo lahat ng objective standards on macroeconomics, in terms of Philippines ranking corruption, things actually were improving during Aquino, but clearly it was not enough. And clearly, marami rin pagkakulang. And I think one of the problems also during that time was many of the officials from then, back then 
they were never apologetic or they never accepted criticism or, or genuine you know acceptance of some of the shortcomings they had and that made it easy for for you know to come in and completely demonize the project right so i think this is what magaling is trying to do is to do this a better way so essentially same good governance agenda same focus on lg and grassroots but minimize minimize the partisan aspect of this and also minimize the yun din ang ano ko eh, yun din yung paradoxical din because if you look at the language of mayor magalong and the language that was employed by a lot of participants and mayors in that event there is a moral politic to it there's an element of moralizing to it but at the same time by consciously trying to go beyond quote unquote political callers i think they're also trying to shy away don't from cancel culture and you uh you know evil versus good all sorts of binary self-righteous sanctimonious and frankly discredited style of doing politics so it's a very difficult balancing act but my suggestion really for this movement is again i think I under, uh, there should be a communication of why so far their criteria is quite flexible to put it nicely the manifesto tends to be more generic but i think the next natural step for them is to get some of the bigger mayors in one way or another uh involved I don't know about Vico Soto, but uh, it would be nice if, if Joy Belmonte and some of the other good mayors, ilan na ba? <laughs> you know, it will be more active and more present uh, in these events because you need resources, you need branding, you need you need mobilization, you need organization. Those things are key. Obviously, you're looking at not only 2025, you're looking at probably 2028 and beyond to really do something about this. I think what is also essential here before I go to my last and I think most important point, one of the things that is also essential here is No, I mean, there should be also a non-moralizing approach to this because alam naman natin, pagdating sa corruption, a lot of that has to do with just how systems work. For instance, there are thousands of political appointees for any president. That automatically opens it up for corruption, uh, potential corruption or, or, or a nepotism. Siguro bawasan yung political appointments. You know? So uh, Professor Batalia, for instance, from La Salle has very fantastic work on this. You can check. The other thing we have to also look at is, for instance, uh, to deal with political patronage, yung election financing. You have to strengthen the community to make sure that election financing laws are respected. At the same time, we have to push for party building so that you don't have to rely on millions and billions coming from few oligarchs to run and campaign because that's essentially the root of corruption. Because if, if, if 80, 90% of your campaign money comes from two or three people, what do you think is going to happen when this person wins? And in some cases, you have dynasties who have to spend billions out of their own pocket. What do you think they're going to do once they win, right? So, kaya hindi pwede moralistic lang attack dyan eh. It's also a structural, operational, legalistic problem that has to be dealt with in a professional, systematic way. So in crowd, I saw a number of top, top experts in the country and political scientists who have done fantastic work on election financing reforms, party building, etc. So I think we have to move from blueprint to more systematic solutions. Uh, so moralizing, yes, it's good to be moralistic, but I think if you really want to solve this problem, I mean, it's not like mas moral ang Sweden and Norway kaysa, I don't know, mga ibang bansa dahil uh, kaya mas mababang corruption. No, it's because they did reforms within their state institutions. They built strong parties. They created strong middle class and mobilized the middle class to support progressive parties, so on and so forth, right? They strengthened the judiciary. So it's not a moral issue. It's more of a state building, institution building issue. But obviously, good governance will inevitably have some sort of moral aspect in terms of political convictions integrity fear of god that's a given but there has to be really a serious effort there has to be a really really ser serious effort at building institutions but the last thing i want to say here is this the last thing i want to say here is this ang nakikita kasi natin dito is over the past year or so parang sila lenny robredo medyo nag withdraw na sila you could look at it as a tactical withdrawal, so maybe they can come back and be more active and proactive, uh, you know, in, in, in you know in the coming year once the election is starting. Let's see what's going to happen on that front, or you know maybe you know Lenny just had enough, and and you know maybe it's time for the next generation to come up. And I think 
you know, Vice President Lender and Brother Mo others are happy to see that a whole new generation of folks are stepping up to the game, including Mayor Magalan, who seems to be amenable to people across the political spectrum. He has been able to work with many people from across the political spectrum. So, but what I want to say here is, ang katotohanan dito is, and I, I had some, you know, conversation with some of the folks there, right? And some of them just came to me and said, parang feeling namin na abandon kami. Nung 2022, uh, we were heavily active. We we're putting all our hopes into, uh, you know, the presidential campaign, of course, you know who. And now we feel na parang nag-withdraw na siya from the field. And parang kumbaga, they feel like they're kind of a lost flock. Um, and, and they want na palaban uh, yung opposition. Kung sino man yan, is it Rizzo and Diveris? But of course, I, I, I know that they really want Lenny to be in the mix and they still love Lenny, but there's a frustration na baka nag-withdraw sila, baka timing niya, teto, whatever. But the thing is this, Lenny was able to mobilize the biggest electoral movement in recent memory. I don't think any Filipino president, kahit yung mga unity, kahit si Tate Ding, were able to bring out so many people, a million people by some account to the streets to support her campaign. So something magical and special happened. As I said, the problem was, hindi yan na mobilized na mabuti, hindi yan na organized na mabuti. There was no follow through. In any meaningful political sense of it, hindi lang yung Thanksgiving after year or so or posting some nostalgic picture. No, like something really solid. You know, bring these people, mobilize these volunteers, keep them together, build a vision, have a roadmap for the next three, four, five, six, seven, ten 10 years. Parang wala yan eh, from what I understand. And I think, that created a leadership vacuum. That's why you're having the rise of Mayor Magalong. So let's see how Mayor Magalong... Because I, I could see in, in, in the crowd, there are a lot of people who seem to be kakampings, right? I, 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 a lot of them seem to be people who were involved in the Lenny campaign or very unhappy with what happened in the elections last year. So clearly, that's a demographic that, that Magalong can appeal to. But Magalong is also making, it, making a conscious effort to make sure that he's not boxed into a certain demographic or a certain corner and try to push it out from there. So there are going to be some difficult tactical strategic decisions to be made here. But at least, finally, there are LGU leaders, including from outside Manila, who are making the effort, stepping up the plate. But this, this needs a lot of follow through. And at some point, the Lenny's and Vico's and whatever, does, they have to be involved in one way or another to give it further momentum. Kasi sayang. Kasi sayang eh. Because you saw so many people, millions coming, uh, coming to the streets. Uh, last year during elections, really showing, you know, voting with their feet, coming out and showing that they want something different. It's just not about this politician or that politician. It's, it's about systemic reform. We saw that back in 2010. But obviously, as I said, unfortunately, the experience didn't end very well. But the idea here is you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I think there was a very commendable effort by many LG leaders, including Grace Pataka, by national leaders, even, even by Pinoy, you know, to, to mainstream anti-corruption, to push for good governance. And that effort has to be continued because you're not going to get it right with just one election cycle, two election cycle, or one administration, especially when you're up against so many, uh, <clears throat> many trapos, right, who are invested in the status quo. So this is going to be a long, long struggle, you know, Again, as, as my favorite character in Rizal's uh, novels, Padre Florentino said, you have to work and suffer, right? It has to be continued effort over and over again. You shouldn't give up. And I'm glad that there are these people like Mayor Magalong who are willing to step off the plate, but he cannot do it alone. And it, it has, and other elements have to come together for this to be really a force to reckon with in the coming election cycles, but more importantly, as a political movement that can really dramatically change yung ating politika and how things operate in this country. Otherwise, hopeless case talaga tayo. Forever hanggang ganyan na lang tayo. Forever we're gonna punch below our weight. Forever we're gonna perform below our potentials. Forever there's gonna be a massive amount of inequality. Forever dynasties are gonna dominate our country unless something different happens. And if you don't support Mayor Magalong or people or what they stand for at the very least, if not themselves, but what they stand for, then good luck na lang sa Pilipinas. All right, on that note, thank you very much and I appreciate it. And let's catch up soon. God bless.